Have you guys ever wondered what life was like inside of jail? I know I have. As we watch shows like 60 Days In, we kind of get a little insight on what life is like inside of jail. But have you ever wondered what life was like inside of jail for somebody in a wheelchair? Today, we hear the story of Dante Spivey, somebody who is only 24 years old. He's been in a wheelchair for four years, and he has currently been in the Los Angeles County Jail for two years awaiting trial. And he's in a wheelchair. Hello? Hello? What's up? What's up, my man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Just chilling, you know. All right, that's right. How everything going? Well, everything going all right. Um, you know, just taking it day by day. You know, it's a little process I have to go through, but as far as uh, that, everything's pretty much on the right path, though. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, now, before we get into the interview, I just wanted to kind of let you know the purpose of this interview right here. And... We were just wanting to give the people a little bit better insight on what it's like being locked. Oh shit! On what it's like being locked up in jail while being in a wheelchair. All right. Okay. 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 But, uh, if you, if you can, if you, if you can, like try to um, be kind of like close to the uh, phone. Okay. When you have me on, when, when you guys have me on speaker and you like talk away from the phone, it's kind of hard for me to hear. Okay. But for the most part, I can, I can hear you good, though. Okay, all right, Beck, you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right, then, so let me just go ahead and uh, just pretty much just re-harp on what I just said, all right? You straight? All right. Okay, so the purpose for this interview right here, I just wanted to kind of give the people a little bit better insight on what it's like being locked up in jail while being in a wheelchair. All right? Okay. All okay. Right. All right, so diving right into it, you know, tell us a little bit about you, your name, your age, the date of your paralysis, and what level of injury are you? Okay. Well, my name is uh, Dante Spavio. I'm 24 years old. Uh, I have a T9 spinal cord injury due to um, a gunshot. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, that caused me to be uh, paralyzed from uh, waist down. I was paralyzed uh, March 30th, uh, 2018. Oh, damn. So not that long ago. Yeah. Not that long Kind of fresh. Okay. Currently, how long have you been locked up? Um, I've been locked up for about, uh, about two years now. Two years? Oh, okay. Okay, so you really going to be able to give us some insight. Yeah, two years just awaiting trial. I mean, I haven't took no time or nothing yet uh, found guilty not guilty i'm just you know been going back and forth to court okay okay what jail are you at uh, i'm in a uh, man central jail it's in l.a county okay all right so yeah. the moment you get to jail what's processing like for you uh man it's it's it's, it's a hassle when you first get here I mean, you got to go through uh, a few steps where you, you know, you change out of your uh, your street clothes and mm -hmm. they uh, send you through a little scanner to check for uh, contraband and stuff like that. Uh, and then that's when you, they provide you the gel uh, clothes, the jumpsuit and shoes. Okay. Then they ask you questions. Do you feel like hurting yourself? And you know, little questions just to figure out where they want to house you at. If you're going to go GP, which is general population, or if you're going to go protective custody, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that, what type of meds, uh, medication you need to take. Mm. So once that's all uh, said and done, then they have a housing for you where either you'll go uh, cell living uh, in the single man cell, four man mm -hmm. cell. Okay. Go in the big dorm. Do you feel like processing went different for you than anybody else? Um, it's it's not different. It's it's all kind of the same because we go through the same um okay processing. The only yeah. thing uh that they don't do to us in wheelchairs is they don't you know they don't do the cavities. We don't drip. have to uh, strip and get you know naked. You know okay. they do like a whole little different procedure. Okay, this is coming from an Instagram user. Once you finish processing and you own your way to your cell, do they put you in general population off the rip or do they ask you, hey, do you want to go to segregation or, 
or what? Like, what's that like? What's that process like? Uh, once you finish uh, uh, getting your little booking process, mm-hmm. you about to be housed. Okay. I mean, you're it's like you're rolling. You get you get to where you're going. Mm-hmm. You got to be like, say, there's the segregation like the blacks and then the Hispanics and whites or mm-hmm. whatever. You know, you're going to have somebody come up to you like, hey, you know, yeah. you, you black or, you, you know, you're... Uh, this call is being recorded. Hispanic or whatever, then you, you branch off with your people. Mm-hmm. And then from there, the, like, everybody is one. They take care of you. If you, have, if you need hygiene and stuff like that, yeah. they give you hygiene to, you know, help you stay on your, you know, on your feet and stuff. Okay. Okay, so... Before you get in, what kind of supplies were you using? Was you using like the basic, like just chucks, like enemas, uh, like stuff like that for like bowel care and stuff, catheters and stuff? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, when you said that you process it and they ask you what you need as far as like medication wise and prescription wise, is is that going to be on a list of things that you ask for? Once you get here, you ask them, they, they want to know what stuff you need so they can provide mm-hmm. it for you. Okay. Uh, most of the time, it might take a, a little process. They might, you know, take their time with stuff like that. Yeah. But you tell them, oh, okay, I need certain supplies mm-hmm. uh, that I will, I will need to use on a daily basis, and they'll go and put it on your chart. So okay. So there's a time, like, they do pill call um, at 8 in the morning every mm-hmm. day. So at that time... They will bring all of the supplies that, you know, I ask for that's on my chart. They'll make sure I get that every day. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, now, are you taking oxybutynin for your bladder spasms? Yes. Okay. Okay, so they give you that once or twice a day? Uh, they give it to me twice a day. Twice a day? All right. Are you taking anything for pain? Uh, no, I was on a uh, pain. Uh, yeah. medication but it, um the time frame that they had me on it expired so now okay. uh, i'm waiting on to see the doctor again i'm on the list to see the yeah doctor so i can uh they can renew it okay do you feel like do you feel like it's a little more easier for you to get pain medication than anybody else um can you say that again do you feel like it's easier for you to to go about getting pain medication Versus anybody else trying to get pain medication? Um, well, no, they, it's pretty much all the same. It's all equal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, for some stuff, like, um, that for sleeping on the bed, uh, if being in a wheelchair, they're going to make sure you have, like, egg crates and stuff like mm, that. Extra yeah. cushion, so we won't okay. get pressure sores. Yeah. But as far as getting medication-wise, I mean... It's, it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same process of you mm-hmm. know every, everybody else. Okay, okay. Now, when you get there, do they keep you in the same chair, or do they give you a different chair? Uh, when you get here, they're gonna put me. In, they put me in a different chair for about mm. three days because they send the, um my personal wheelchair to uh, the examination room and they mm. want to search it and stuff like that. So that takes about three days, and then uh, they gave it back to me. Mm-hmm. Now, is that like the big old hospital wheelchair, or is it like a good wheelchair? Because I know, yeah, it's like the, my personal one is a uh, is a special uh, yeah. wheelchair. Okay, uh, but the one they have is like the super big hospital one. Hell yeah, hell yeah, it's that big old hospital yeah. wheelchair that we all know about. Yeah, that's that's like a workout right there. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so. This call is being recorded. Okay, so you finally get to your room. Is it the same room as everybody else, or is it a different room that can accommodate you? Or, you know, what's your room like? Uh, well, the room I'm in, it's, it's kind of a, a room that will accommodate me. Okay. Which, uh, for example, okay, it's, it's a medical floor. And the people they house up here on the medical floor is 50% wheelchairs. Oh, okay. And 50% are, are, are diabetics. Okay. So, the wheelchairs, we have like a dorm which holds five, it's five of us in the dorm. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, we 
have a TV, uh, a phone that we can use 24 hours. We have our own shower. It's wheelchair accessible. Um, mm, okay. It's, it's, it's stuff like that, which, you know, so. Yeah. The room pretty much is, uh, is and it's nice, it's, you know, it's pretty much big and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, now, is it bigger than a regular cell? Okay. Than, uh, okay. A, a single man cell. Okay. Do you get like grab bars and stuff like that, like around the toilet? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Then that's what's up. Okay. Um. Do you stay by yourself or do you do you bunk with somebody? Uh, no, we have all single bunks. Okay. We're all. It's like all lined up next to each other. Okay. All right then. Okay. So. So. So you are. Inside the same cell with somebody, you just don't have the same bunk. It's just different bunks, or are y'all in different cells? No, we all in the, um, it's five of us, we all in the same cell. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, like a mini dorm. Yeah. And, uh, we all sleep in here together, just on our own, on separate beds. Okay. Now, is everybody in there in the wheelchair? Yes, pretty much everyone in mm. here is in a wheelchair. If someone comes in here that's not in a wheelchair, uh, they will most likely be a diabetic. And everyone else that's, like, not in a wheelchair and have no disability, yeah. they house all of them people uh, in one pod. Okay. So it's like we're separated. We're all general population, but, you know, it's just separated. Mm-hmm. Do you, this do, call is being recorded. Do you feel like that you would rather it that way? To go in, you, you know, with other people that is that's in wheelchairs, with you know the type of cells that you get. Do you feel like you would rather go into jail that way versus the regular general general population? Uh, if you ask me personally, this well, this is my um, this is actually my first time uh, going through the jail. Uh, okay, but from what I've been hearing around, they say. This med the medical floor is like the best thing you know mm -hmm. you can ask for okay. inside of jail because you know you get you get you know different kind of privileges mm -hmm. and the, the cops are no they're strict but they're yeah. so strict like and you will be you know mm -hmm. somewhere else in a, um, a regular pod. Okay. All right then. Okay, so tell us about these privileges, my man. I want to know. What do you uh, what y'all uh, get? What? What type of privileges do y'all get? Okay, uh, the privileges we get, um, well, like I said, we get, uh, we have a TV inside the dorm, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, they give us a remote control, and we uh, control it, stuff like that. There's okay. no time limit where they, they turn it off or nothing like that. Mm. So the program basically runs around us as far as inside our dorm. Okay. So that's a privilege to have a TV, um, a phone inside the dorm. That's a, a privilege. Yeah. Uh, a shower inside the dorm. Uh, that's a privilege because we can use these things throughout mm -hmm. the day, you know, as needed. Yeah. Um, we get um, two snacks a day, mm -hmm. uh, which might be like, you know, some fruit in a bag, sandwich and stuff like that. Okay. Um, we get... They give us like board games, dominoes, chess. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to go out to the roof. We go to the roof once a week for about three hours um, in the afternoon. Okay. So them, them are like basically the only privileges we get as far as being uh, in the other pod where, you know, you don't have no disability or whatnot. Really, your program, the privileges are limited. You get to go out, when you come out your cell over there. You go to day room. They mm -hmm. have day room twice a week for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, they get showers every other day and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's pretty much you know we have more leniency over here. Yeah. Is everybody in the dorm pretty much on the same bow schedule or are y'all like uh, uh like tapping in and out like somebody's doing it and then somebody's going in doing it or like how is that like? It's like, it's, I mean, we try to work around each other's schedule. Yeah. So, I mean, once, you know, we figure each other out, and so mm -hmm. like, you, we basically living with each other in here. Yeah. So, it's 
like I might have a, a, a certain program that mm-hmm. you know I want to go about, and the next person have their own program. So it's like we try to work with each other's schedule. Yeah. Um, so it's like say I'll shower, mm-hmm. you know, and we only have a you know it's a single single shower. So it's like I'll go in there. You know, I might take an hour shower, you know. This call is being recorded. I like the hot water, so I'll sit in the shower and, you mm-hmm. know, relax and stuff like that. You know, yep. and the next person understand because when they go in there, you know, they just, you know, take mm. a decent shower. Okay. Okay, now, do, do they give you a shower chair? Uh, Yeah, they give us a shower chair. And um, inside the shower, I already have, like, a built-in, like, a chair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, like... All right, so the chair's, like, bolted to the wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you heard that the guards treat people differently that's on a medical floor versus the regular floor? Um, well, yeah, on a, on a regular floor, mm-hmm. you know, I hear stories are, you know, uh, that some some guards, they're, like, they're just mental if you're in here, but, like, you know, a certain certain kind of case which I would say like um say petty theft or mm-hmm. robbery or you know domestic violence or whatnot. Yeah. You know, they automatically like, oh they say they have to pass out your dinner. They mm-hmm. might just throw your dinner tray on the floor like, oh, you know, forget this dude or whatever and oh, keep dang. going. So it's like you kinda get it has its ups and its downs. Me, I try yeah. not to be in the uh, Police space or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. I just get out of their radar. Nah, I feel you. Myself, so, you know? I feel you. Is there any fights that happen? Is there any fights that happen? Mm hmm. Oh, man. Uh, within my two years, I'll say I saw um, inside of my dorm uh, mm-hmm. about, like, about like maybe about like 12 fights. Like twelve fights? Twelve fights within two years. Okay. Now now have you been fighting since you've been up in there? Uh no, I haven't I had uh, a heated um uh altercation. Okay. With, uh, maybe about I say about two people, but no, mm-hmm. I have I had no fight. Okay. I mean there's people there's people that come in here mm-hmm. and uh, they don't wanna go to the regular pods because yeah. you know, they fight a lot, you know. You go in there, and it's really like a gang thing. Oh, your blood crib. Okay. You crib, you gotta fight. You blood, you gotta fight. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, they know the jail system. So when they come to jail, they automatically um, injure. You know, have a bad head to get in the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. So now they place them in a wheelchair, and then they put them in, you know, a wheelchair dorm. Mm-hmm. So then that's where they feel okay. They have the advantage. They, you know. Yeah. They can do anything without mm-hmm. you know nobody nah, telling them that. So I've been through I've been through that too, and I mean it's okay. really nothing I can do but to just mm-hmm. ignore it. What do you feel like that the jails can do to make it better for somebody in the wheelchair? Um, the world could do or or being in jail. Being in jail. Okay. Um. It's a lot the world can do, my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I will say, just, they, it, I mean, it's real nasty in here. Oh, okay. It's like, yeah, it's real, it's real nasty, it's dirty. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the, the, the food is horrible. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff that, you know, they could change as mm-hmm. far as uh, us being in the wheelchair. Because okay. It, it's, like, it's like, even sometimes with the supplies that we get. You know, everything's supposed to be sealed and closed and stuff like that. But, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes it's like they don't care. They'll just give you stuff that's open, you know, and that can cause infections. Exactly. You know, stuff like that. Exactly. So, you know, and I mean, they won't even give us, you know, hand sanitizer or stuff like that to wash our hands. You know, just what? Get sink water. You know, and then it's like you come in here. And, okay, they house you on, on, on the bed, and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I need a mattress, uh, I need a new blanket, you know, I need new uh, clothes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. When they'll be like, okay, we'll bring it back. But, but for right now, 
use use what's there already, which was uh, it'll be something already on the bed mm. that someone else had when they was here when they left home, mm. and it didn't smell bad and stuff like that. And yeah. they expect you to use that. Oh hell no. You know. Yeah. So, this call is being recorded. And and it's like what they give you, that's what you have to uh, work with. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, I definitely feel like that they should definitely make it, you know, sanitary for you guys, especially in there, because I feel like, you know, with COVID and everything, I feel like that that's a that's a that's an illness that can really take anybody out. But I feel like for somebody in a wheelchair, you're a little bit more susceptible to, you know, getting a bad end of the stick when it comes to COVID. You know what I mean? So they definitely can make it a little bit more sanitary for y'all. Definitely. Okay. And on top of that, mm-hmm. on top of that, for say for dinner, they'll give us, they'll give you a scoop of a scoop of rice mm-hmm. and maybe some mixed vegetables on the side, and that's dinner right there. Damn. Or they give you, they give you a, a hamburger patty with a hot dog bun, <laughs> and that's and that's dinner. That's crazy. You know, so it's like you know they they they. They really treat us uh, messed up in some ways. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Now, since being since being in jail and being in the wheelchair at the same time, what do you feel like has been the biggest obstacle that you faced in there? Ooh. Okay. Um, if you got multiple, you can tell us multiple. Okay. okay. Oh, that's a good one right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, my biggest obstacle being in a wheelchair inside a jail would have to be living with other people. Mm. Because I'm a real private kind of person. Yeah. Uh, in a wheelchair, I, I like my privacy. Mm. So it's like in jail, there's really no privacy. So a lot yeah. of stuff that I was, I'm not comfortable with within myself. Mm-hmm. I had to learn to, you know, yeah, this is what it is for now, mm-hmm. you know, and I had to live with it. So that, it took me a, a while to kind of, you know, adapt to that. Yeah. Um, and another big obstacle was, you know, coming to jail, and hearing all the stories, what goes on, or they fight, and yeah. you know, people get stabbed, and all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I tell myself, dang, when that happened, what am I going to do? Like, what do I do to protect myself? Yeah. Being in a wheelchair, and you can't do much. So then I come here, and for a while, it didn't happen. I was thinking, okay, all this, all the stories, or whatever, that just, you know, they put extras on stuff. Yeah. So then it, it came to a day where... I actually experienced that where um, the fight broke off mm-hmm. and there was like, you know, like weapons and stuff like that involved. Yeah. And I, I was I was in the days like, dang, what do I do? What do I do? Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody's just fighting and stuff like that. And I, um, I, I got away from the, the situation, but it's like, when something like that happens, mm-hmm. you know, you can, I mean, myself personally, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to be involved in nothing. I stay to myself. Yeah. But it's like on the other side where it might be a racial thing, mm-hmm. you know, there, there, it, it, it's, it's no excuses or it's no, you can't be in it, you're in it. And it's yeah. like when they, they're going to come for you, it's like, what, what am I going to do? Who's going to protect me? Yeah. So that was, Basically, my biggest obstacle is like, uh, how to how am I gonna defend myself or mm-hmm. you know when it, when something like that happens? Yeah. Do you feel like do you feel like that you could take a piece off your wheelchair and use it as a weapon, or or is your wheelchair pretty much is just all one piece, kind of like bolted together? I couldn't use it as a weapon. I mean, it's yeah. just all, you know, put together and stuff like that. Okay. All right. All right. So you ain't got the little side rails that you can kind of like take off and stuff like that. Nah, nah. It's just uh, it's, you know, it's just 
you know, a regular old, you know, a special wheelchair. I don't have the side rails and okay. all that other good stuff. Yeah. Before going into jail, did you have any idea of what it would be like, you know, for somebody in your condition? And and then once you got there, what changed or what was different? Um, before I came here, no, I didn't really think too much about what would it be like for someone um, in a wheelchair in jail. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I happened to come and it was like, uh, it was like a reality check. Everything that, you know, I normally wouldn't, you know, expect is like, yeah. it's, it's a, you know, it, it actually does happen. Yeah. Say somebody's about to do some time, right? They're in a wheelchair. What do you feel like, do you have any advice that you would give them? Um, I would say don't come to jail, but the advice <laughs> I, I, would, I would give them is like, prepare yourself uh, mentally. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. Prepare yourself mentally mm. and uh, really just, you know, stay to yourself and try to figure out, you know, something that you're good at or try yeah. to get into something that's, you know, for the meanwhile, that's going to, you know, make the time go by fast so you can only keep yourself occupied. Okay. You know, because it's, it's, it's a lot of tricks that, you know, that comes with being in jail. Mm-hmm. It can be good, it can be bad, you know? Yeah. So, I would just say, you know, just try to find something to do to occupy yourself. Um, go to school, actually, you can get a degree mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, you know, you get milestones Okay. Uh, to get your time uh, cut down shorter mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Okay. You know, stay out, of the, stay out of the crowds. Okay. Okay, then what are you doing to keep yourself occupied? I try to draw. I, okay. I draw. Um, I read books. Um, I work out and stuff like that. Okay. And pretty much just stay in touch with my family and uh, mm-hmm. my daughter and um, you know stuff like that. Okay. Okay. What's your favorite thing to draw? Um. So I just come up with all kind of ideas. Uh, yeah. I was, you know, magazines that we get. Mm-hmm. I just try to draw the little cartoons. Okay. You know, different characters or, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. One of my most uh, favorite drawings is, uh, this is, uh, this is like funny cartoon. It's like a, it's a uh, Minnie Mouse drawing. Okay. So it's like a, it's, you know. Yeah. Funny little cartoon looking. All right, then. All right, then. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, now, do you have anything else that you would like to share or say before we get off this one? Uh, I would say, me, um, personally, uh, me being in here, mm-hmm. it really taught me a lot. Yeah. I never thought, like, you know, I would come to a place like this mm-hmm. before this. You know, I would, uh, I had a kind of okay life, you know, going to school, uh, playing ball in college, and yeah, and, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But as far as you know, being in jail now, uh, allegedly accused of, you know, something that mm-hmm. I had no, you know, no business in or whatever. It really, it really opened up my eyes and taught me yeah. a lot of, you know, stuff I didn't know before. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to, I see, I always hear a lot of people, you know, they go to jail, you know, I'm not guilty and stuff like that. Yeah. And looking on the outside in, you will always automatically think wrong about the next person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now myself being inside of the shoes of, you know, being inside of jail, it's mm-hmm. like now I kind of, I feel the pain that, you know, other people will go through. Okay. Because I'm not guilty, but it makes me realize a lot of things. And, you know, it's a lesson learned to, yeah. you know, never come here again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for everybody out there that's, you know what I'm saying, taking life for granted and, you know, stuff like yeah. that, I mean, you know, you got to, you know, 
No, a rude awakening coming. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, do you know how much how much longer you got, or do you know whenever, uh, like you gonna be taking it to trial or playing out? Like, do you know how do you know how much time you got left? Okay. Uh, as far as right now, they've been like pushing it off. Oh, I'll go to court. Yeah. Next month, and then from there, they will give me a new court date, which will be like three months later from there. Ah shit. Uh, due to the pandemic. This call is being recorded. Due to the pandemic, so they like push a lot of stuff off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But now, since I've been here these two years, like now they're trying, they starting to pick up the process. And yeah. Okay. Like that. Okay. I think yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense because COVID shut down a lot of stuff out here, so I can only imagine, you know, how it just shut down things up in there. So, it, especially when it comes to like, you know, stuff like that. So, all right then. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, they shut down our visits for about a year. Oh, uh, damn. Then, so it's like family members couldn't come inside the court. Um, mm. they couldn't visit us. Stuff like that, so it was like, man, it was like living in hell, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, was they giving you like, you know, like free phone visits and, and stuff like that, or free video yeah. visits? Nah, they didn't give us no, no free um video chat visits or yeah. nothing like that. You know, we couldn't even leave. You know, we couldn't get our visits downstairs like through the glass. You know. And yeah. we couldn't even get that, even if they had a vaccination shot. Mm. They just opened up our bitches maybe about eight eight months ago. Yeah. But we was like on lockdown for about a year. Okay. Okay, so so you pretty much been up in there the whole COVID length, pretty much, since COVID started. Yeah, like so, yeah, as soon as it, like, mm. soon as it kicked off, you know, I've been here since then. Dang, what was that like? It was a lot yeah. of people catching COVID left to right. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people that went man down. Uh, they caught the COVID and, you know, went man down. So it was like, you try to stay as clean as possible. You know, yeah. wear your mask at all times. And, mm -hmm. you know, when someone new come in here, you just got to make sure, you yeah. know, they're on top of their game. You know, they got yeah. to shower, they have to wash their hands, mm -hmm. uh, you use the toilet, make sure you spray and disinfect it, wipe it before and after. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Gotta stay clean. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, I want to just touch on something before we finish this interview. I want to just touch on, you know, the the supply issue. You said that some stuff that you get is open. You know, what's open that you're getting? Is it catheters? Is it enemas? Like, what is it? Yeah, um, some of the some of the catheters uh will be open and stuff. This call is being recorded. Some of the catheters will be open, mm -hmm. or they, they'll bring a, a, a old dandy uh, catheter that just been sitting down in the basement or whatever. Damn. And I'll be like, no, I, I, no, I don't want yeah. that. You know, well, this is all we have. They'll tell you they're going to bring it back within the next couple of minutes, and you won't see that catheter until, like, you know, the next two yeah. days. And it's like, you know, that's something I need. Yeah. Do they do, do they give you enough just for a day supply, a week supply? How many catheter how many catheters do they give you at one time? Uh they give me um maybe about two or three catheters uh at a time. Okay. They give me through the day. Two or three? Yeah, two or three. Now if I got a um if it's a nurse that, you know, that know me and I've been here for a while, yeah. she might be a little bit cool. And she's like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. call me by my name. Like, here you go. She give me extras. Yeah. Okay, so you, so how often do you uh, cast? Um, maybe about every six hours. Every six hours. Oh. And, and, okay, so you only get two or three catheters for one day? Yeah, like two, like two or three. Damn. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, cause I use, I use like five a day. 
I use, you know, and then if I work out, then I might use six. So to hear that you only get two or three, water. yeah. Yeah, and you're working out, so you're drinking more water. Exactly, like exactly. So, so really, to hear that you only getting two or three, that's kind of that's kind of yeah. eye opening right there. Yeah, that's shocking right there. Beautiful struggle, you know? Yeah. Now, I feel you. I feel you, my man. I feel you. All right. Now, is there anything else that you would like to say? Um, no, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, look, my man, look, I appreciate you giving us some insight because, trust me, there's, there's a lot of people that will be going to jail that is in a wheelchair that, you know, like they might need to hear this because I know one of them. You know, so there are people that really need to hear this story, and I definitely look forward to bringing it out. And I appreciate you coming on here, sharing your story on, you know, life inside jail while being in a wheelchair. So I appreciate it, my man. Thank you. No, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for your time, man. All right, my man. I appreciate it.